we're good. Good morning. Dr. Badia here for our next uh, installment of Facebook Surgery Tuesday. I think I have the name right. Great, Facebook Tuesday Surgery. <laughs> Hashtag something or other, but <laughs> bottom line is we're here to, we're here to uh, kind of how to minimize some of the mysteries of surgery. Let's start by saying that an arthroscopy is not what I, I, I tell the patient, it's not surgery, it's a procedure, okay? So surgery is when you open something up and you do a joint replacement and we have one like that later today. Uh, and at some point we'll, we'll probably transmit those once people are used to it, okay? There, there is some blood there. This arthroscopy is a really neat procedure because it allows us to diagnose a problem and fix it in the same setting with some little holes. And people are very familiar with this in the knee. They get a lot of press about arthroscopy through because of the soccer players and the football players who have knee arthroscopies, which allow them to go back to playing professional sports, sometimes within, uh, within months. And this is a lady who had a twisting injury. She works uh, with uh, kids and had a twisting injury to her wrist and has been having pain for almost five months, so we're gonna we're gonna learn what's causing her pain. Good morning. Good morning. So the take-home message here is if you're having pain for more than a few months, it usually means something's going on more than a sprain. One of my pet peeves is that patients with good intentions go to general clinics, um, general urgent cares, general uh, occupational health centers, and, and the problem is they're seeing a well-meaning physician who doesn't really understand orthopedics, let alone the wrist. So it's important to find the right, I don't, I don't do knees, I don't do backs, so if you have a back problem, you really wanna see somebody who does, treats the spine, and it's the same thing with hand and wrist. So we already have an idea of what's going on, Kate and I, because we saw the patient in the office, and of course, she's been walking around with the diagnosis from the uh, insurance company that, that she has a sprain of her wrist. Uh, sprains don't hurt for four months and don't incapacitate you. So this lady has pain with any kind of twisting, trying to open a doorknob, trying to open a jar. And the pain is mostly on what we call the, thank you, on the owner side of the wrist, which is the pinky side. I right? hate to use the word pinky, but we'll will be colloquial, right? The pinky side, they're having tea, right? And right here, and this, right away, this tells me there's about eight or 10 different things that I'm gonna look for here on the owner side of the wrist. And then there are problems on the radial or thumb side of the wrist. So arthroscopy will confirm a suspected working diagnosis and will allow me to also fix the problem at the same time, which is what the patient wants, right? So. All right, turning up. So, so Kate's put an S mark on it, kind of draw some of the blood out, which is more important for open surgery, but we do it for this as well. And now we see the wrist with traction, so there's weight, and this is, this is separating so that I can get into the wrist, okay? And then I'm gonna sit comfortably, and that's where all the, the action's gonna be. So you'll probably wanna come around behind us. There's a lot of motion here. It's almost like a Watson. Delting. No, a scaphalunic. Oh, that's all. I mean, oh. Yeah, I'm doing my, I'm doing kind of a primitive mm -hmm. Watson test here, and I don't feel the bone landmarks too well either. So now we've, we've introduced some fluid. It's a very loose joint, right? And so that, that can often tell me, suggest what's happening. So now what we're gonna do is we're running fluid through here. Okay, now this is a camera. It's a fiber optic camera with a 30 degree angle. Focus it. So I, already I see something's going on because there is a lot of redness here. Lights off. Okay, so let's, so first, 
I, I typically, like with, when I do a shoulder arthroscopy or a wrist or the base of the thumb, I first look at the anatomy in a, in a cursory manner just to get an idea. And there's a lot of inflammation here. You can everyone see that red. So this is called the ligament of testu, which is not really a ligament. But when I see a lot of hemorrhage there, and this is a four and a half month old injury, she had a significant injury. Now here's a ligament, the scaphalunate ligament, that little bulge. Right, we call it the baby's butt right there. There you go. Okay, so that's, so I'm going to take a picture of that because I want to show the patient. I'm going to say, look, your, it looks like your scaphalunate ligament is not damaged, but we'll look at it from a different perspective. Now we're looking towards the pinky side, the ulnar side. So hopefully everyone will learn by the end that the ulna is the pinky side of the wrist. All right, now we're going to go in with another portal. Okay, so the, the capsule transilluminates, you can see there. So the, the light goes through, and if you look there, now I'm gonna go in. Yeah, I want that portal, and yeah, that's about a good place. So, oh yeah, so there, there the TFCC is, is torn. I mean, I can see that. Can you take a picture of that? This, this whole structure should not be that, that bold. That. So this is, we have a uh, fast fix, right? Can you have a fast fix around, please? Yeah, this is pretty significant. Wow. hard to even get in because there's just so much redundancy yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, now the action starts. So we've got our shaver in there, which is a mechanical device that allows me to, to breathe. So I'm, I'm applying suction now. So what I want to do is remove this tissue. See so all this hemorrhagic tissue. So I'm going to take a picture of that because it's pretty, be pretty obvious to the patient that hey something's wrong here, right? We we'll need the shrinkage probe, radio frequency. Probe. You can see already, within seconds, it's looking better, right? So, a lot of what you, what you see here in the capsule, that's where the pain fibers are located. So, when we remove that inflamed tissue, we're kind of halting the inflammatory process and hence the pain. So, the patient doesn't care about the inflammatory process or the, the cytokines and all these fancy terms. They just care that the pain goes away. Basically, arthroscopy is a combination of, of seeing with the camera. This is a 2.7 camera. In fact, I'm working with a company now at Salt Lake City called Nexus, where we've designed cameras that are specifically for small joint arthroscopy, and not only the wrist, but the hand, the smaller joints of the hand. And that's a 1.9 scope. This is a 2.7 scope. So it's kind of an intermediate, for a hand surgeon, it's kind of intermediate side. For my friends who do hip and knee surgery, this is a very small scope. Okay. 
Okay, so now this is, it's even obstructing our view. Can you get a picture of that? Mm -hmm. So this is what we call the dorsal capsule loda on the top of the wrist. And this is where, when I examined her right before going to surgery again, I saw her in the office, of course, and then, and, and then I repeat my exam, and I, and I noted that she was very tender in this area. And now I see why. She's extremely inflamed here. So, so are there any questions? A lot of times, the first time people see this, they have some kind of very basic questions, I'm sure, that the good thing about the web, right, is you're anonymous. That could be good and bad, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> okay, so now we're seeing the pathology a lot better, right? There's much less redness, much less, that's called synovitis, all right? And we're gonna tighten all of this up as well with, with um, a device called radio frequency, it's really high tech. But before that, what I'm seeing is, as Kate applies, as we apply suction, the whole cartilage, so let's get a probe. Not an easy wrist. So, so this, Now the MRI said it's central tears. Yeah, not, not really. This is, this is really a peripheral tear. You know what? She's young enough. She's forty something. Yeah. Forty two. Forty two. Yeah. So so I don't like how redundant this is, and a lot of information is here. So this is what we call a peripheral tear. And if she was much older than that, then I might consider just the breeding and tightening this tissue but I'm actually gonna repair this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna debride, and then we're gonna take this cartilage, it's very much like the meniscus of the knee, it's called the triangular fiber cartilage, or TFCC, complex of the wrist, and we're gonna, we're gonna tighten it up like a drum. We're gonna restore the trampoline effect here. Okay, so, let's see the end. Yeah, you want the plastics open already? Um, Probably just give me two minutes. Hold this here, please. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is people are getting hit in, so I'm going to be using this frequently. So all these tissues blocking. Okay. do is create basically I gotta, I'm almost going to recreate we need a little more um, pressure, pressure on the bag. please on the bag okay. Thank you. take that back a lot because <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to fix this car that I really need to see very well that good? Yeah, that's thank funny. you Thank you. Right, now we can see. Okay. So now, what people don't realize is it, it, medicine is, is like any other. There are differing opinions, and I always say medicine is often more of an art than a science because there's the science that backs up many things we do. But a lot of my colleagues, particularly in Europe and, um, for example, in Japan, my friend Toshi and other people believe that a lot of these cartilage injuries should be reattached Lori, to bone. You know what? Lori, you know what? Reattached to bone. I'm, uh, I'm not of that opinion. I, I feel that when, when, the, when there's an instability to the joint, which is a little too technical, but what I believe in doing is a capsular repair. Because the problem is not mechanical, really. It's, it's, it's pain. So, so I am doing this to create sort of a bed of, of bleeding so that we'll repair it. 
and I'm doing a uh, repair with a special device by, by a big company. It's actually called Smith and Nephew. Maybe it'll, I don't know, maybe it'll fly to some meeting or something saying that, right? <laughs> or do I have to be like LeBron James or something to get? I'm, uh, I'm going to be using this device by, by this company, Smith & Nephew, to, to reattach this, this TFCC complex. This. All right. So before I do that, we're going to look in the mid-carpal joint because to do this, it's, it's, it's very technical and I have to hold the wrist in certain positions. So I'm going to check another part of the wrist to make sure, in, in particular, if there's no ligament injuries. Okay, this is a cartilage, not a ligament. Okay, so. so we're going to go into another part of the wrist. She is very... How much traction does she have, Kate? Yeah? Ten. Ten? She's very... There we go. Can you delete the last picture? Thank you. So we're going to be looking, this will be a completely different view you'll notice in a minute. What I'm looking for in this view is injuries to the ligaments. So everybody always confuses tendons and ligaments and cartilage, they're, very, they're all very different structures. Ligaments hold based on collagen and they hold bones together. So the famous ligament is the ACL, right? That holds a femur to the tibia. Okay, there we are. Now we're, we're already in the mid-carpal joint and we see a lot of inflammation there. So I'm gonna take a picture of that and show the patient. Okay. Picture, picture five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely so. We'll we'll be seeing now. Yep, I think there's an instability here. What do you think, Kate? Look at that. Yeah. You can see it right. I can see it right away. So we'll show we'll show everybody. So now I'm gonna go make a, I'm gonna create another portal because this is my visual portal. Okay. So this is well, look at that water. So mm -hmm. turn down the pressure down. Okay, you see it there, it looks like a whale harpoon, right? It's, that's how big it is. This is an 18 gauge uh, needle, heck of a needle. So it looks like huge. Over here. Okay, so now we're gonna create this portal. Shaver. Okay, so now we're in. Okay, so you can barely see because there's so much fraying in this tissue. We may need a fluoroscopy in here. We have it. Uh, okay, great. We'll just need to be great. I wouldn't be great, yet. I'm just trying to write it. Yeah, uh, a lot. I'll, I'll know in two minutes, Kate, but yes, okay. it, it's looking. I mean, you can see. Uh, we'll fix the TFCC first. Actually, Kate is the one who thought that she had a TF, uh, LT tear, and I completely agree with her. Do you do the TFCC first or the ligament first? Um, good question, but I, th I think that I think pinning the ligament first. Pinning so. first? Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, we'll we'll more. yeah. So here is a triquetral bone, and there there shouldn't be this big defect. See, it's a bare, we call it a bare spot. So for some of my colleagues who are watching, bear through some of the basic stuff I'm talking about, but they'll be interested in this. This is what I call the bear spot. Um, uh, my, my buddy in California has also described this. Um, and, and the critical ligament of the lunotraquitral is here. This is all red. So this means that when she had this twisting injury to her wrist, that this, this ligament has failed. Just like your ankle or, or an ACL, the difference is these ligaments don't often heal on their own because they need some stimulus. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this down to some bleeding bone right there. 
because when we release the tourniquet, I want this to bleed. The reason I want it to bleed is it'll form a new ligament. But I, need, I do need to immobilize it, so she will be in a cast, and we're gonna put pins across this joint. So, probe. And it's gonna be very clear. All right, so here's this probe, which is gonna, which allows me to, to probe inside, so basically feel, because I can't put my fingers in there. So there's a probe inside. You see this? So I'm, I'm able to take the probe and go all the way into that interval. So I will document that. This is called a Geisler three pair. My friend Will Geisler described the classification. So this is an excess amount of motion here. This is just this. So what I want to do is I'm going to put pin, two little pins that are going to go across this joint, this, this uh, bone into this bone to illuminate. And now you're going to see the scapula ligament. See, I can't even put the probe in there. See, it doesn't even go in there. So that's how it should be. And based upon my physical exam, I suspected already that her scapula ligament was intact. Okay? But we did suspect this, the LT ligament tear. Look at that step off. It's pretty, pretty significant. We certainly have seen worse, but this is, this is right up there. Okay? Um, let's get a little radio frequency now. So now we're going to use a, a technology which um, which affects cross-linking of the cartilage. You can see it's going to tighten the tissue. So you have to use it a certain way. You, you can't be too aggressive about it but it helps stimulate this, this tissue tightening. And, it, and what it does require is a period of immobilization, which we're gonna do anyway, because of the ligament and cartilage tear. Okay, so now we're ready for pinning. So this is a lot cleaner before when we got in here, if you recall, it was very red and inflamed and now it's not but but it will get red and inflamed again with normal usage of her of her hand if we don't pin and create a new ligament that stabilizes this interval so that without arthroscopy you would not see this is the position we're going to put it in and without arthroscopy there, there's no way to diagnose this i can assure you that an mri in the majority of cases will miss this type of tear I believe so, it missed it in hers. Yeah. Oh, it's. But you know that this is the value of, of what we're teaching here is that people put way too much stock in MRIs, and um, it, it's it's really important for the public to understand that now an MRI in the shoulder, for example, is critical, absolutely critical. And we and we have it right in our office because I hate this back and forth that patients have to do. We're all busy people. You come to my office, we examine your shoulder. Or you come to one of the ortho nows. They look at your shoulder. If they think you might need to see the shoulder specialist, they've already ordered the MRI. We've done it in the same visit many times. And, and then one of the shoulder specialists of, uh, of, that works with ortho now, including myself, will see you. But in the wrist, it's different. In the wrist, you really need to examine the patient. So, so the scope is gonna come out now, okay, for a little while. And now we're using this big device called, called fluoroscopy, which is like a live x-ray. So I actually have one in my office that helps me to diagnose things as well. Okay. Okay, put it right side up. Okay, you know what? Oh. Okay. Hit the flip, please. Let's, we have to take some weight off also. Flip is uh, F at the top. Yeah, okay. Okay, you can take some weight off. So you can see that, that big space in That means the ligaments have been really stretched out in her. So we're gonna take some of the weight off because I want this little bone, the trachytrum, to come down level with the lunate, and I'm gonna pin it. And that'll, that'll allow a new ligament to form there. 
Is that good, Dr. B, or would you like one more off? Um, let me see. Yeah, one more off, please. Okay, it's just the, it's just the base. That's perfect. Excellent. Okay. Okay, just stabilize it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. So she's a little on her positive. Mm -hmm. so a little, just a little bit. Now. Okay. What happens when you've done a thousand of these, right? You get it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, let me check. Can you hit a speed? Driven across. Okay. Let's check. Check and see if it's okay. So the next. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that one. It's hard to see her. Hit, hit escape. I need somebody standing there, please. Hit escape constantly. Okay. Questions? Everyone's just so interested right now. <laughs> <laughs> Commenting, oh my. <laughs> oh my. No questions? Okay. Great opportunity. I actually I actually would love to have this opportunity. I've always been fascinated by neurosurgery at the at the base of the brain and I'd love to have the opportunity to ask one. So my neurosurgeon colleagues are doing something. Okay. So we're putting the second pin in, right, because two is more stable than one, obviously. Before we do that, let's we'll look at the floor, and you'll see that now the um, see they're moving as a unit now. Okay. Okay. All right, back out with wait, the wait back on here, please. Okay, so now we addressed the tear in the luno ligament. We debrided it. We did a little bit of shrinkage. We pinned it. Those pins will be in about seven weeks, so she'll be in a cast. But now we're going to repair the cartilage. So this, this lady had an immense amount of pain and, and, and swelling all on this side of her wrist. And of course, in the clinic she was going to, they, they, they kept telling her she had a sprain. 
So uh, the take home message is please, you got to see the appropriate person to have a diagnosis. It's, it, when, when they're just telling you a sprain is a very colloquial term. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, sprains get better in, in a few weeks. Okay? So this, this, this lady had a lot of pathology. All right, so now we're going to go in here. We, we need the fast fix now. Put all the weight on. Do you want more? How many pounds? Did you put all the weight on, Adam? No. no. Please. Okay. No questions yet. No questions. All right. All right. Good. So now, now we're putting the scope not in this portal, but in this. So this is called the three four portals. The six R, little technical, but all of these things have, have names, of course, to, to describe, particularly when we're at. So I just got back from uh, actually one of the best wrist meetings I've ever been. It was in Lyon, France, and of course the food was pretty good. <laughs> but in Lyon, uh, that was organized by Guillaume, Guillaume Hertzberg, who's a wonderful host and a fantastic wrist surgeon. And uh, we had a lot of heated discussions uh, about some of these things. So, so this is looking now at the wrist in a different lights off. Do you have a supernator? Oh yeah, um, shaver, please. So now we're gonna we, we're looking at this from a different angle. because we're going to get the fast fix device in. Okay, so I need to be able to get in, in here easily because we're going to be putting a device in. Okay, okay. So now we're going to clean up this part. We couldn't clean up because from the other portal, we couldn't really access it. So now we're going to clean up this part of the capsule. So again, everything that you see there that's very red and redundant is synovitis. And, and swollen capsule, and we're going to remove it all through little holes. I bet it looks better than it looks already. I feel like Julia Child used to describe her cooking. Everybody remember that? You're aging ourselves, right? <laughs> now the TFCC has to be handled just right. <laughs> well, who's a big cooking guy now? By the way, I want to say that. Tom Colicchio, you heard of him? So am I allowed to say this publicly? Tom Colicchio, the famous chef, and I held the high school school record in a four by 100 meter freestyle relay. Did you know that? In, in Elizabeth Public High School, New Jersey. I'm very proud of that, public school kid. And we were swimmers. And I can tell you, you, you probably wouldn't want to see me in a Speedo now. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I had a, both of us had a lot, well no, actually I had a lot less hair, <laughs> um, and Colicchio now has no hair. <laughs> a little more pressure on the back, please. No. Okay. How much do we Yeah, we may need another bag, especially to do this repair. So now we're cleaning up, so now we're, we're getting ready, we're coming out to the owner of pinky side of the wrist. Right. A lot of the clean tissue. Can okay, hold the shape. Now I'm going to start looking at our repair site. She's going to be tricky just because of her anatomy. So yeah. So this is where it's detached. Wow. So things you don't want to hear in the old wall, right? Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> We're going to change the bag over here. So let me have a probe, please. Yeah, much better, thank you. So the probe is going to help me understand my trajectory. 
We need we need more weight. Okay. If we can, it, it's really she's just a very difficult wrist. Okay. See how there's no space here? Okay. And it's funny because our mid carpal joint is like cavernous. Yeah. Cavernous. And where I, where I need it to work is tight. Wow. Okay. Alright. So let's see. Yeah, your TLCC really goes up. A four or five portal. Well, I'm just wondering just the anatomy of wrist. I'm not sure that we're gonna, I'm going to get a good angle. For, for the uh, fast fix. Mm -hmm. I think I might do a suture repair. So this is a device that's going to be a little tricky just because it's not as rigid. So it's a very tight wrist. Let's have a clamp again, please. Try to get just the right angle. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
track the first step. Not pusher. Now we got a suture. So we're doing what we call an all-inside repair. You may do that. <laughs> Each. You think we should call my grandmother? <laughs> got it. <laughs> ah, not so bad, huh? Okay. okay. There it is. Okay. So. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, see, so now we, we've you know, now we're gonna let's do a shrinking, but I want to do it from the other. So let's go three, four. Go back in. So what this is doing is just basically pulling that cartilage tissue, which is detached. So now this is tight before that was uh, before that was sort of couldn't even, you couldn't even define the cartilage now. I mean of course she's got a lot of frayed tissue and a lot of that. Okay, now that, that is tight. Before it was this whole edge was lifted up before. 
I mean, it's not great tissue, but pretty good. So now it will be in the cast, so all of this will scar peripherally around the edges and heal and, and, and create stability. And of course, we saw the ligament tear. Pain. In the repair of the structures, that's to keep that redness or synovitis from coming back. Because this will heal now in the cast. Now. Look again through this. There's the, and there's the critical volar ligaments, palmar ligaments of the wrist. There's the two of them there. But much different appearing. And we had already determined the scapular ligament. ligament. Look good. It's also viewed right there. Okay. Very good. So, tell. Um, so. Notice we've done a lot of work here, and we haven't made a single incision. These are just little holes. So Kate's going to put some, rather than putting stitches, the moment we put a stitch, that's where a little scar will form. So if we just use these little tapes, I think everyone remembers when they were a kid, right? They, I don't know, I'm busted like, the bridge of their nose or their chin. And you put these little, huh? I'm just going to wait until she's real Yeah, until you die, okay. So we're going to put the sheets. We think she might be a little bit sensitive to the sticky stuff, so we're going to, Kate's going to wait. So we get some, the arthroscopy fluid just starts to drain out a little bit more. And then these little tapes, so this will be on our next week. We remove these and then she'll go into her cast. And she'll have basically no scar. These little portals heal with, I mean, like, like a beauty mark. Like, uh, you know, they'll heal like something like that. They'll just be little, sometimes you can't even see them, especially in people with light skin like this. So uh, the, the, the hard part here, of course, is that she is going to need to be in a cast about seven weeks. The first five weeks will be in supination because of the cartilage repair. So right now Kate has in supination and we're gonna hold her that way while she puts a splint. And the splint is temporary until I see her next week and put a cast on. So, um, all right. So that's, uh, that's wrist arthroscopy. Um, so any questions? Can you explain to everyone that's just tuning in what it is you did? Ah, okay. If they're just tuning in at this time, I want their job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so we've already done two surgeries today. So uh, we did a wrist arthroscopy, which took longer than usual because there were two different pathologies. This lady had a twisting injury to her wrist. We found what we call a lunar trequitral tear. It means the ligament between two of the small carpal bones in the wrist had torn and we found an instability. We debrided that and we pinned it. We also found a cartilage tear similar to the meniscus of the knee and the edge was torn and detached. So all arthroscopically with a, with a particular device. Um, can you show me, Claudia, the, the fast fix? I can show. So this is a device that allowed, before I used to make an incision, pass suture, tie it. Now, pretty, pretty high tech. This, I'm able to uh, deploy these little bioabsorbable tacks which have suture and when I press it deploys it I pass it through the tissue and then I pull on it and it, it cinches it down and then this device cuts it so pretty sophisticated all very small this is a these are small joints and now there's technology the, the biggest challenge we have frankly is people with these problems getting getting to the right specialist and that often doesn't happen which is sad I see people a lot of them actually fly in from abroad. I saw a guy from Ecuador recently with two years of wrist pain. And when we put the scope in, we, we found pathology similar to this. And it's just, um, it's a shame, but we, there needs to be more education. 
that these these are fixable problems, but you just have to see the right person. Uh, don't don't come see me for my knee. And by the way, I'm having shout out to Dr. Mauricio Herrera. I'm having my third knee surgery Thursday, but this is the bigger one, and this should be uh, this should be it. But I want to make sure I find not only the right type of specialist, but the right person who does that kind of procedure. And that's what, what I think the take home message is. Uh, at least Ortho now in our community helps you do that. And in other cities as we expand, is that you would walk into an Ortho now, not an emergency room, not a general urgent care, but rather an orthopedic specific walk-in center. And we'll route you to the ankle specialist if needed, or the wrist specialist. Hope everyone learned something. Back to, back to surgery. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.